Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the, you know, preparations of my husband's birthday, part two. We started the last video with a preparation and we continue now, so we can finally entertain again. And it's been so long, I'm doing a few special things today, so I thought I would film them in and show you guys. We'll make a savory and desserts platter and much more. That's it. I thought we just film this, give you guys some ideas as well. If you have a party soon as well. So hopefully you're gonna enjoy this video. If you do, give it a big like and subscribe if you're new. And let's get started. Okay, so as you've seen before, I prepared the kibbe dough and put it in the fridge so I can uh, form it the next day, the very next day. I didn't feel uh, the filling. And then we're gonna fry it in a very hot oil until it's golden brown if you don't know uh, the filling recipe it's in my channel so after we finish frying them we're gonna freeze them and all you need to do at that time is taking them out of the freezer one day before the party is taking place and heat them in the oven a little bit before serving next I'm gonna make a pudding dish so here I used uh, one package of biscuits and here we have nearly one liter and half of milk and then I used two a uh, package of uh, budeng, it was banana budeng now we're gonna cook them on fire until it thickens a little bit and meanwhile I took out the cake that we prepared in the last video and I'm gonna cut it into layers so let's trim and level all of my cake layers Actually, there's a big difference between one layer cake and many layers cake. The difference is a huge in taste and texture. So what I like to do is getting nearly about four to five layers. Sometimes cake bake with a slightly hump on top. So cut it off, give it to your children as a snack, or you can go ahead and eat it if you would like to. <laughs> so we need to trim off any domes that bake up on top of our cake. So my choice for this party was multiple stacked sheets of cake held together by frosting or another type of filling. You can go ahead and use jam if you want or other preserves. You can use a long serrated knife too to help you cut in the cake. It's not necessary for you to have a cutter like this. Or you can use a thread or a long piece of floss, hold it taut with both hands and then wiggle it through the cake until you hit the end. It will cut clean and give you even slices. Then I poured the pudding over the biscuits and put it in a fridge and here I'm gonna go ahead put some uh, chantilly cream. About I used about three backers and every backer have two sacks with one cup and a half of milk. I use only half of the amount uh, of the milk that they use on the package. So if they say that you have to use uh, two cups, use only one. If they are saying you have to use one cup, use only half a cup. So in order for the cream to, to be perfect, the whipped cream. And now I put it in a piping bag, getting it ready. Uh, so we're gonna put it in a fridge to cool a little bit. I'm using here this tip, it's a star tip. Now, as I preferred my cake to be lemon cake, I'm gonna make the lemon curd or like lemon gel. So I put one cup of sugar with half a cup of water and now I'm squeezing three pieces of lemons. We're gonna put the lemon juice above the syrup that we made and then we're gonna stir it a little bit. And once the sugar resolves uh, at the end, the last step is go ahead put in one uh, tablespoon of starch with a little bit of water we don't want that much and few drops and a few drops of uh, food color the yellow food color pour it over it and just stir it until you see that it gets translucent at that point you can go ahead turn it off and let it cool down so you can use it uh, above the cake now the cream is ready the top is ready. Now let's see what's next. Well, at that point, I went ahead to prepare the jelly. So whenever I make cake, I like to make jelly next to it. So I heated one cup of water and add two bags of jelly crystals slowly while stirring all the time till they are all dissolved. Add one cup of room temperature water too and mix well in order for the jelly to get firm. And very quickly, 
What I like to do is use in half the amount they write on the back. So instead of using two cups of hot water and two cups of uh, cold water, I used only one cup of that and one cup of room temperature water. So I'm gonna cool them uh, in the fridge right now. Put them in the fridge and see you in next station. <laughs> Okay, here um, I was cutting the lemons to garnish the cake. I cut them into small slices. And now let's get into the fun part. I'm working on a cake board. Just add one dot of the whipped cream on the bottom and place that cake layer in the center. Water it with uh, milk. You can water it with uh, sugar syrup if you want or any juice. And then once that's done, we're going to go ahead and cover that layer with a generous layer of whipped cream frosting. Give it a quick smooth just to even it out. And then I had these chocolate chips waiting in the fridge for Noor to use them. So I did. Well, let's pop that second layer on now. Water it again with a splash of milk. And all you want to do now is cover in that with the whipped cream and you'll smooth it out. It will look perfect. The key is really for the cake to be cool. So use an offset spatula and just smooth the top of the cake out after every and each layer of the cream. At that point, I remember that the chocolate chips that I'm using was is filled with coffee beans and my husband doesn't like it. So I had to change the plan and switch to the other kind of um, chocolate chips that has some biscuits inside. I don't know how did I forget about that. But anyway, now let's go ahead and smooth the top and the sides too. This cake actually looks fine to me right now when it's all smoothed out. I'm gonna finish it off with a really easy spiral pattern. All you need is a round tip spatula, a teaspoon or an implement and a cake turntable if you have one, otherwise smooth it out or swoop it up. Okay, so at that point, I can go ahead and I bite the edges with a scallop powder. So you just bite in little waves and it's wonderful. This is life-changing and so delicious. There are actually infinite amounts of bibing tips and ways to bibe and techniques to bibe. And what I'm doing here is just a few simple ways to make the cake looks beautiful. And don't forget that this is a homemade cake. It will actually not look perfect but it's absolutely made with love. Now let's go ahead and pour in that uh, sauce that we made for the cake, the lemon sauce, or as we can call it, lemon curd. And then what, what I'm doing right now is putting some of the lemon pieces that we sliced together in that gel or in that sauce and cover it totally and then put it on the top like a like a rose shape and and add the size of the base next is sticking some of the mint leaves on uh, the cake on the sides of the cake like that as shown and then i changed my mind and i took the big pieces of the mint i left there the small pieces this could be a perfect uh cake for the summer but of course i can eat cakes all the time in the summer or in the winter it doesn't matter for me and for you too i think uh, right now i bought i'm putting some, some of these colorful candies i chose the yellow color from them it's like a star small stars and i'm putting them like that and that's it our cake is done Okay, right now I have a leftover whipped cream, so I uh, took it, of course I'm not gonna throw it, put it on the dessert, on the pudding that we made. Okay, so here's what happened. I'm gonna tell you what happened to this dish. When I put the biscuits and I wanted to pour on the pudding above it, the pudding was so hot and the biscuits floated to the top and I didn't expect that to happen. So I needed something to cover the, the top. The whipped cream was a very good idea 
And look at that, it looks perfect right now with a little bit of dried cherry and dried pistachio. It looks amazing. Well, let's go ahead and decorate or garnish in the strawberry jelly that we made before. They are firm right now. They are so firm right now after I left them only one hour in the fridge, actually. They didn't need more than that. And I sliced some of the kiwi and I wanted that to be symbol. Well, here we have, if you can remember last video, I revert the fake chicken thighs too. I freeze them and today I took them out immediately from the fridge to the hot oil. We want to deep fry them. We can actually fry frozen food, there's no problem in that. Just remember to shake off any exercise prior to putting in, in the hot oil and make sure the food is cooked all the way through. And then what I did once that set is I went ahead to prepare an easy busy yet incredibly delicious and creamy avocado dip. I had two avocados in the fridge so I'm gonna use them. My avocado here is fairly ripe, I will not use a blender because they are so soft. I used a fork, at which point I added the juice of one lemon in addition to two cloves of garlic. We'll add a pinch of salt along with a drizzle of olive oil. Now let's flip that until everything is thoroughly mixed. The whole process took me a few seconds just to be completely smooth. At this point, we're finished. This is it. All you have to do is pour it into a maybe nice little bowl so you can serve it with raw vegetables. I used the small radish, cut them into slices as shown, and then I went ahead and made a rose in the middle. And that's it. Look how beautiful is this. Last but not least is a drizzle of olive oil. As you all know, we are Arab using olive oil for all of the tips. At that point, I wanted to de-seed the pomegranate to garnish some of the dishes. So if I try to take the seeds one by one, it will take forever. I was gonna stick around and wait for that. So after cutting the pomegranate in half, try to get yourself a wooden spoon, a very big one, place the pomegranate upside down on your hand and hit it with the back of your wooden spoon and watch the magic. This trick actually will change your life, will save your life forever. But please, don't hit your hand. I had a cheek of the hair, I made it before but I didn't film it with you, just put it in that mold with plastic wrap in order not to stick and if you want the, um, if you want to know the recipe just write me in the comments so I can write you the ingredients. I'm gonna garnish it right now with some of the uh, chopped, some of chopped parsley along with the pomegranate that we made. The pomegranate seeds like circles, one circle, one green one, one red one. I love uh, when I add the green to the dishes like parsley, like um, lettuce and other herbs. And then I'm gonna garnish with the leaves of the parsley like that. And this dish is done too. Next dish is gonna be... Oh, I really can't remember. Let me see. With you. Look how beautiful is this one. For me, garnishing is more important than the taste sometimes. <laughs> okay, so, oh yes, I remember. Next dish was the pies that we made, the cheese pies. So I'm gonna garnish with the same way, but on some of the lettuce leaves, uh, on the base of the dish, on a bladder, and then put in the pies on it. And they look like small mushrooms when you put them in that way, and they look amazing so nice this is my favorite section the garnishing section anyway now let's move on to uh, place the, the fake chicken thighs we're gonna put them in a cupcake liners well paper cupcake or muffin liner liners aren't just for baking you can use them as a single serve dishes like in these here i'm gonna put some of the cubicles too in them and as I've told you before, I heated the kibbe in an oven set to 150 degrees Celsius, very low, and now I'm serving it. So in this way, they are more organized. <clears throat> oh. 
All right, friends, here is the whole setup. I really love how all of these turned out. It looks great. I think everything's gonna taste great too. Really impressed with how all of these came out. The smells here in the kitchen are irresistible. The smells of bakery along with the warmth of the oven. We have here the cheese pies, the pudding, the cake, in addition to the chicken thighs, the kibbe and the pizza. There was no place where the avocado dip, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you guys got some inspiration and ideas from today's video. And if you liked this and want to see more videos, give it a thumbs up because this is just one of my favorite videos to make. So much fun putting it together a menu and then just seeing it all set up. See you later.